Hey guys, it's Kevin Meyer View for the season or possible series finale of Big Little Lies, season two, episode seven. I want to know. And obviously, going into this episode, I was very excited to see the way things did play out, especially after that cliffhanger at the end of last week, knowing that Celeste was going to interrogate Mary Louise. We're going to get more into who she was and things like that. I was very excited to see the way that would play out, but I was also very trepidatious because of the fact that this supposedly is the last episode of the show, and I just did not know how they were all going to wrap it up satisfyingly in one episode, in, in an episode that's going to be under an hour. You know, I did not know how they were going to be able to do that. But I have to say, those fears were pretty much unwarranted, because I loved this finale. This was a damn good finale. Um, Now look, yes, this might not have been the perfect finale. I think there were definitely some things that... They could have done if they gave more, you know, credence to some things this season. But overall, I was very satisfied with the way things played out. And if this is the final episode of Big Little Lies, I'm honestly okay if they stop here. I really am. But we're just going to get into it right now. So obviously, we're going to get into the stuff you really want me to talk about first, which is all the stuff between Celeste and Mary Louise. I thought all of this was brilliant. I love the way things were done here because, you know, we start things off and you can see that Celeste, she is pretty much sure that this is going to go really well. Uh, you can see that her lawyer is kind of uh, skeptical of her being the one to question Mary Louise. She feels she should do it, but Celeste, you know, she knows Mary Louise more. You know, she knows a lot of what Perry has um, told her about Mary Louise, and she feels that she can kind of use that to get her to open up a bit. And I really love that. I love that Celeste is finally doing that, because aside from the fact that we know that Mary Louise is someone who is so just gung-ho about protecting Perry and making sure that he, um, you know, no one defames his character in a sense, um, you know, we don't really know that much about her. And in this episode, we actually get a lot more context into who she was. And the scenes where Celeste was interrogating Mary Louise, it could have been really over the top, but I felt like it was handled really well because Celeste really appeals to uh, what she herself has gone through. I mean, she questions Mary Louise, and one of the first things she asks her, and she's almost just as harsh as her lawyer, except I felt that Celeste was being a lot more reasonable. Like, the questions she was asking Mary Louise, these are the questions that they should have asked her. Like, her lawyer should have asked her these questions, but he didn't. And, you know, I'm glad that Celeste did ask her these questions. You know, she asked her, like, you know, you want to take my kids away? You feel that they're a danger? Have you contacted child services? And Mary Louise, that she hasn't done that. So we're seeing that even though you know, Mary Louise has presented herself as someone who is a better option for Max and Josh. She has not taken the proper steps to really show that Celeste is this bad mother, that, you know, that narrative that they're trying to create. She has not done enough work to prove that, and I thought that was really great, just showing that Mary Louise, even though she has had a good reason, and I've said before, I do think Mary Louise is onto something when she's saying that Celeste is a little bit, is definitely damaged, and there are things she can do that are, you know, there's, there's certain behaviors that have been a bit concerning for sure, but she did not take the proper steps to fully show that, yeah, Celeste is um, a bad mother. Celeste is someone who is unfit. Celeste just cannot be with her kids at the time. And I think right off the bat, we see that, um, you know, definitely there's a lot of holes there. But the biggest one of all is when we finally get more context on Perry's brother. You know, we heard about it kind of not throughout the season, but we've heard little glimpses of it here and there. But we finally dive into what was really going on. So apparently what happened happened is Mary Louise was driving, you know, Perry and um, his brother, and she ended up in this really bad car accident, and Perry's brother ended up dead, and basically this sort of spawned Perry into who he is uh, today because of that, and we have this scene where, you know, he was telling Celeste about what his mom used to do, how she would kind of blame Perry for it, and she would say that it's his fault and things like that. And you see how this essentially created Perry into the monster that we all know him as today. And 
that's why he turned out the way he did. And I thought this was very satisfying for sure. And I like that, you know, what they're really try trying to drive home here is that no one becomes an abuser because they want to be. They become an abuser from experience. They become an abuser because they themselves have been abused. And that's exactly what happened. You know, Mary Louise emotionally abused Perry and things like that, frequently blamed him. And even though she tried to shape him up into this great uh, man, you could see that it was probably putting a lot of pressure on him and that caused him to act out that turned him you know down a really dark path and that's why he turned into the volatile uh monstrous perry that you know we saw him as and i thought that was very satisfying and i really like the way they handle things with mary louise here because she just doesn't want to admit it you can tell that she feels guilty she's doing whatever she can to try to make herself look better than she is and she's saying no there's no possible way it's me even going as far as to after this going to celeste and telling her you know she was lying and things like that even though celeste proves that perry did abuse her she shows a video video evidence of what perry did and it's it's way worse than anything we've seen i mean he was like punching her and kicking her and th i mean it was it was very, very graphic for sure. It was definitely, I mean, even though we didn't actually see it because it was pretty far away, just hearing what Perry was doing, I mean, it was very hard to listen to for sure. It was very hard to stomach. And the way that like Madeline and Jane were reacting in court, that's how I was feeling watching it. And I think they did a really great job with just really diving head first into the trauma that Celeste has gone through. She's not hiding it anymore. She's not going to just act like it didn't happen you know she knows it happened and she's going to finally confront it and the scene where mary louise is just pounding on the door telling her that she's lying and things like that you know you could look at it in two different ways but i saw this as mary louise knew she was defeated at that point she knew that she had no case now that you know celeste basically has won at this point there's no possible way that uh, mary louise is going to be able to continue this this narrative and Basically, you know, before the judge is about to call for, you know, basically who's about to win, Mary Louise stands up and we get this fantastic scene with her. Now, look, I will admit this was unrealistic. This would not happen in a real courtroom for sure. But honestly, the scene was so good, I didn't care. I mean, Meryl Streep just acted the hell out of the scene, as she has all season, but especially in this scene... Mary Louise finally admits what's actually been going on with her, and it's basically what I expected. It's kind of what I thought that she has been going on all season, that basically the reason that she has been so gung-ho about Perry, and the reason why she has been constantly trying to prove that he is a good man, he's a good man, is because she just did not want to believe it. She didn't want to believe that that's her son. She didn't recognize him in that video, but now that she's actually seen it, she knows that she can't deny it anymore. She can't live in a lie. She has to accept that, yes, her son was not the good person that she wanted him to become. He was not this perfect individual that she wanted. And I really love this scene where Mary Louise talks about how she does genuinely love Celeste. She cares about her very deeply, um, but that she does not feel that Celeste is, you know, in a good position. Again, I didn't see this as Mary Louise actually think this. I think she just, she's doing whatever she can to try to make up for her lack of, you know, uh, proper care with Perry and fix that with Max and Josh. And that's something that Celeste very much said as well. And I, I do agree with that. I think that's, a, that's very, very much what she was doing. She wasn't doing this because she thought Celeste was a bad mother. No, she was using that as a way to make up for what happened with Perry and try to, you know, um, try to groom Max and Josh into what she wanted Perry to be. And obviously Celeste was not going to let her do that. And just, I, I love the fact that Mary Louise was defeated in a sense. And I think that was really great to see. Uh, but she, Celeste does not just, you know, completely disown her or anything like that. She does let Max and Josh give her a hug. You can see that Celeste, I think, genuinely does feel bad for Mary Louise, and Mary Louise is finally taking ownership for what she did. But Mary Louise knows at this point there's really nothing else she can do. So she does, in fact, end up leaving Monterey, and that's the last we see of her. And I thought this was very satisfying. Like I said, all season long, we've been seeing a Mary Louise that has been very intrusive. She's constantly been, you know, trying to get to the bottom of things. But 
now she's realizing that she just can't do that anymore. She needs to accept that her son just wasn't a good person. She can't keep living this lie anymore. And uh, I like the fact that she ended up leaving. I know a lot of us probably wanted it to be that she finds out what happened, but I don't think that's what's important. I think what's important is that we now know more about Mary Louise. We now know a lot more about Perry as well. What turned him into this violent monster and things like that. We have a very good understanding of that now. And I think all of this was very necessary. You know, not that this entire season I don't think has been necessary, but this stuff especially has been very necessary. It not only has shown what Celeste has gone through and how this trauma has affected her in positive and negative ways and how she's been trying to move on from it and kind of, you know, just accept what happened and try to move on with her life. But it's also shown how someone like Mary Louise um, and someone in Perry's family, how they also are affected by it. And I think they've done an excellent job with that this season. And Mary Louise was such a great character. And I really love the way things were concluded here. So obviously, while that is the main stuff going on, the other characters, there's a lot of stuff we do wrap up with. With Bonnie, we get to see her and her mother and how she genuinely feels good that she's let it all out at this point. She doesn't feel like she has anything to hide from Elizabeth anymore, and she can finally tell her that despite all of her faults and despite all of the trauma that her mom has inflicted on her and the fact that she's been living a lie in a sense, she does still love her mother and eventually it comes to the point where she is forced to pull that cord, Elizabeth dies, and it's a very satisfying moment. Even though, yes, obviously it's sad to see Elizabeth die, it's that weight off of Bonnie's shoulders. She no longer feels like she has to you know, uh, you, you know, listen to how critical her mother was being or listen to her mother's ridiculous assertions about, um, you know, all this supernatural stuff and things like that. I'm glad that really didn't end up going anywhere because that would have been really dumb. Um, but what it does get her to finally do is confess the truth to Nathan, which was what I suspected. She tells Nathan that although he's a really great father and that, you know, he uh, is definitely someone that really does love her a lot, she just does not feel the same way about him, and she never really has. And the only reason that she really was with him is because she needed someone. She needed someone for emotional support. She needed someone for means of escape, and... This is such a great moment for Bonnie, and I think this has definitely been one of the biggest improvements over the first season, that Bonnie has just been such a more compelling character, and it's because of moments like this that have really made her into one, and I think Zoe Kravitz just did some amazing work there. I love the way that was done for sure, and again, even though things are now different between Bonnie and Nathan, um, it does not change the fact that she does not have to hide this from him anymore, and... I think one day Bonnie is going to find someone that's better. I think Bonnie is going to find someone that genuinely um, she does love and someone that she isn't just with as a means for escape. Obviously, that trauma is always going to be there. You know, the um, again, the abuse that her mom inflicted on her, it's going to be there forever. It's not going to go away, just like it is for Celeste. That's never going to go away either. But Bonnie is doing her best to move on from it. She's doing her best to finally just start off with a clean slate, in a sense, and, you know, really just telling, owning up to Nathan and telling him the truth. That was really that last thing she needed to do, um, and uh, I think we really do get to see that here. So I thought that was a really great moment for sure. And then the stuff with Ed and Madeline, I absolutely loved. I was worried for a second. I'm not going to lie to you. I was worried when Ed was talking to Madeline that we were going to cut back and see, you know, him cheating on her with Tori or something like that. But thankfully, it didn't go there. What happens instead is that Ed has realized that in spite of everything they've been through and in spite of, you know, him not trusting her for a little bit, it's gotten them to admit they, their genuine love for each other. And he felt that they their original wedding was a little too spontaneous, that even though, yes, they do love each other now, they kind of rushed into things a little bit. So he wants to take the opportunity to renew their wedding vows. We get this great scene between them where apparently Abby's ordained. I guess she can, you know, do the ceremony now, but it's just them, Abby, and Chloe, and... 
Such a great moment. I love the way that was done. I love the opening moment as well with Abby and Chloe, where Chloe's worried that, you know, they're going to separate, and Abby shows that they're not going to and things like that. Just such a great moment there for sure. And, uh, again, I love seeing that even though there's been a lot of, obviously, tension between these two throughout the season, they were actually able to work things out. We've seen Ed voice his concerns. We've seen how Madeline has been very sincere about how she's not going to do this again, how, you know, she is going to fuck up, but she's not going to be unfaithful to him ever again. And I think just from all of this, they've been able to learn how much they genuinely care about each other, how much their relationship is real, how much of it isn't just artificial anymore. And I think that's just a really great, um, satisfying note for these two. And I really love the way things were done there. I, I don't really think they could have ended it better for these two overall. But then we get to the two things that I did not think were completely satisfying, and that's the stuff with Jane and with Renata. Now, I'm going to talk about Renata first because there's a little bit more going on there. As we know, Renata at this point, she's just done with Gordon. She knows exactly the kind of person he is now. She knows how he's been just lying to her, has been doing all this sleazy stuff. And the second that she knows that they're going to lose everything, uh, all he seems to care about is the fact that, oh, the person that got him into this in the first place has let him keep all of his belongings, and he's just fawning over it, and this is the last straw for Renata. She's just not going to take it anymore, so she just smashes all of his toys, she smashes everything, tells him that she's done, that, you know, he should have been a better husband, and... I love it. I love that Renata's just not going to take it anymore. It's a great moment for her. And even though I do think this plotline has been severely underwritten, um, Laura Dern has really elevated it. They've done some great work with her all season, and it, it shows that Renata's not just going to accept it from Gordon anymore. She's not just going to take his bullshit, and she doesn't have to. She can get away. She can find a way to re-inherit herself, and uh, I really love the way that was done for sure. I also really did love the moment between her and Mary Louise early on where she is telling Mary Louise how ridiculous it is that she thinks um, that there's a problem with her not being a stay-at-home mom and things like that. I think that was definitely a really great moment, but it really is this scene where she's just completely demolishing all of uh, Gordon's stuff that's just completely trivial. Um, meanwhile, all the stuff that matters is going away, and yet he's only focused on these toys and things like that. Um, and the way he was talking to her, too, I mean, he's talking about how now the nanny's gone, he needs something to play with, it just shows how little Gordon really cared about her, and, uh, I think they did a really great job with that in this scene. Again, while I don't think this has been the most strongest plotline this season, I think this scene was incredibly satisfying. And then, similar with Jane, we get this really great confirmation with Corey, where we see that Corey does genuinely care about her. And I like that, too. I like that Corey did not go in this direction we were expecting, where he was going to be someone that was working with uh, the FBI and things like that. You know, I think for a while, people were thinking that's where it was going to go. Turns out that's not the case. Ziggy sees how much she cares about him, and... I think that was a really great way to end things, showing that these two are going to try to make things work and showing that they are going to try to make an effort there. It's great. It's very satisfying, and I, I really love the way things were done. And again, while I do think we could get a little bit more from those two, um, I still really like what they've done. They actually did give a good reason as to why Jane just has not had as much going on. Ziggy even said that like she's been in a better place this season, and she has. She's been much better than she was. I mean, season one, she wasn't damaged necessarily, but she was very closed off. She was like Bonnie was. She was kind of like the outsider in a way, and this season, it's been the complete opposite of that. She's been much more positive. She's had that weight lifted off her shoulders, and because of that, now she's able to move forward. Now she is ready to have a stable relationship. And a guy like Corey, who seems like he cares about her, you know, he even tells her, like, I don't want to just be with some random girl in a bar that I don't know, that I have nothing in common with. This is someone that he really does care about. These two have gradually gotten closer throughout the season, and now they can finally start exploring their relationship. Maybe this will finally get Jane to start being more intimate. Maybe she'll be able to move past her fears. Again, similar to 
to Bonnie and Celeste. I don't think she's ever going to 100% be over it, but you can see she's starting to move forward, and that was definitely a really great moment for sure. I was worried what they were going to do with Corey for a little bit, but I really did like the way things ended here. But of course, what you guys really want me to talk about is the way things do wrap up here, which I was overall satisfied by. I can see, I, I can tell you right now, I can see a lot of people being divided on this ending. And I was fully prepared because of, you know, what Game of Thrones did and things like that, that this wasn't going to be satisfying. I was really worried that was going to happen, but I genuinely love the way things wrapped up here because it, it really kind of concludes the whole theme of the show. You know, this show in general has always been about these these lies that we keep inside, these internal thoughts that we have not been able to fully uh, just, you know, come to terms with. And the last thing, of course, that all of them are hiding is the lie. And Madeline has this talk with Celeste very early on about how this lie is destroying them. It's going to tear them apart. And it's had a shelf life. That's something that they've always known. They've known they can't hide it anymore. And now that Mary Louise is gone and, you know, the case has been dropped, there really is nothing stopping them anymore. So the end of this episode, we don't just see Bonnie going to the police station on her own, which I think if this season were to come back, that's how it would have ended is Bonnie does it on her own. But no, everyone goes with her. And I think because of what they know about Celeste, I actually think things actually work pretty well for them. So the show doesn't end with everything being okay. It, it ends with them finally being able to stop living this lie, to stop having to, you know, hide things from the world, them finally being able to come to terms with everything and move on from it. And I think that really is the perfect way they could have ended in a show that is so deeply rooted in trauma, in abuse, but also in artificial relationships. Much of that we saw this season, I think this was a very satisfying way to end it. I can see this being, like I said, a surprise or something like that where people are just not very satisfied by the way it ends but for me I really could not have thought of a better way for them to end it it definitely was ambiguous for sure but overall I thought it was a very very satisfying conclusion and so with that big little lies is now seemingly over now I'm not gonna say it's completely over but I will say I don't really see how they can do a third season now I feel like they kind of wrapped everything up and sure we could have a, we could you know hypothetically have one where they own up to their actions and maybe you know one of them goes to jail or something like that or one of them is able to move on and there's there's definitely things you can explore but I feel like much of that has been explored this season I think they've done a really great job with that here and as a finale I was very satisfied overall you know there's not really a lot of lingering things that I think I, I would have asked for that we didn't really get here and I think they did a good job with that overall so yeah I don't really have too many complaints with this finale I think they did a really great job with tying up all the loose ends diving more into who Mary Louise was as a person showing her wrongdoings and how that really did cement Perry into what he became, why he was so evil, why he was just such a hateful person, why he, you know, how that abuse was not something that he just had. It was something that was, um, you know, clearly something that w he had throughout his childhood. And because of that, it turned him darker and things like that. And I think they did a really great job with showing that. I love the, the bookends we got for Celeste and Bonnie. I think both of those arcs were so satisfying. I love the way those two characters were concluded. And stuff with Jane as well was really great. Madeline, I mean, all the stuff I thought was very, very satisfying for sure. So as a finale of television, uh, I think this was very satisfying. Is it the perfect series finale? No, but as a finale, I'm content. I am fine with the way they did wrap things up here. And I think overall, it definitely was satisfying for sure. Now, in terms of the season overall, I have to say I'm pretty satisfied with the way things uh, turned out here uh, for the most part. And look, I've said before, I do not at all like what happened to Andrea Arnold. I very much do wish she had more of a voice this season for sure, especially since they brought her on to have one. And the fact that that was kind of stripped away from her and that, you know, you had David E. Kelly and John Mark Vallee and they kind of controlled the season and any sort of artistic integrity she didn't really get to have. Yeah, that sucks. And I hate that for sure. But 
it does not take away from how good the season really was, because there still was a lot I loved about the season. I think the way they handled Celeste, especially, was even better than season one. The way that she herself was kind of all over the place as a person, how it almost was destroying her, but that before it was destroying her, she realized that she needed to get help. She needed to do something about it. And I really love seeing that. I like seeing her take that initiative. I like seeing her trying to remain composed, trying to be a good mom. And I think they did a great job with that. And the way that Mary Louise kind of threatened her in that way, that whole rift was fantastic. I loved that dynamic. I think Mary Louise just added a whole new layer to Celeste as a character. And I think they did some great stuff with her. I think initially... People were suspecting that Mary Louise was going to be the character that would get everyone to own up to their faults, but it really was centered on Celeste, and I feel like that was the right choice. You know, this this was Perry's mother, and obviously, though she was adamant on gaining answers, it really was just about her trying to accept the fact that her son was a good person. She didn't want to think, she didn't want to live in a world where he wasn't a good person. That was kind of her failure. She couldn't accept the fact that he wasn't a good person. And uh, I think they did a really great job with that for sure. And I think that arc was fantastic. The stuff with Bonnie as well, such a better character this time around. It's not that I didn't like her in the first season. I just, I didn't connect with her that well. This season, not the case at all. We got a lot more into who she is, the fact that she was emotionally abused and how that kind of had caused her to have this very sort of artificial life. She was rebelling a lot. She was, um, you know, have it, she was acting out, she was trying to get away from her mother, and by doing that, that's why she married Nathan. She didn't marry Nathan because she loved him, she married him because of the fact that he was someone that could help her get away from all of this, and I like the fact that she finally confronted that, she finally admitted it, and it just makes her an overall much more well-rounded character. I know Kravitz herself has expressed that there's some stuff she thinks was untapped potential, but for me, I feel like they did what they could with her. I feel like they tapped into some really great stuff, and I feel like overall I'm satisfied with what we got with that character, especially compared to season one, where I liked her, but I just thought she was kind of just like the perfect character, and I'm glad this season we got we dived a lot more into who she was, how closed off she was being, how she herself felt guilty for what was happening, but now confessing all of that to her mom, it's that weight lifted off her shoulders, and that's gotten her to finally come to terms with it, and hopefully move on, and I think that's something that was definitely very satisfying for sure. And then Ed and Madeline was the storyline I was the most worried about, but I thought they handled that storyline pretty perfectly, honestly. I, I like the fact that these two, you know, it seemed like things were doomed for them, but they actually were able to learn from this and grow as a couple. That's something we don't get to see a lot with storylines like this, but that's what would happen in real life. I mean, it doesn't always happen. Obviously, you know, we saw that with, like, Renata and Gordon, but these two genuinely do love Love each other. It's just Madeline made a mistake. She owned up to it. It was a very, very bad decision, but she owned up to it. We see she genuinely loves Ed, and I like seeing those two work things out. I think that storyline was very well done this year. It could have gotten... I, I was worried it was going to get redundant. I was worried it was going to get over the top. It never did. If anything, it gave us a lot more room to see how great of an actor Adam Scott is. He was so good this season. I think he was on his A-game throughout the entire season, and he was even better than he was in Season 1. Season 1, again, he was good, but he was similar to Zoe Kravitz, where he didn't have as much to work with. This season was the complete opposite. They gave him a lot more to do, and I was very impressed by that for sure. So I thought that stuff was excellent. The two storylines that I just feel were a little underwritten is, first of all, uh, Jane and Corey. While I do think they did a good job fleshing out these two as a couple, I do think that we could have gotten a little bit more with them throughout the season. I think that if they would have given them just a couple more scenes, make their scenes a little longer, um, I would have liked them even more. Because I still liked Corey, I did, but... I do still think they could have done more there, and I know I continually say it, but the fact that she never once mentioned Tom, and we never once heard how things turned out between them, it's a little weird. It's like he just like, dropped him from the show, like that character never existed. We never got any insight on what happened between those two. Now, I'm assuming, because of the way Jane was acting towards Corey this season, that things didn't work out. She, you know, she probably got cold feet, but we never once got a mention, and that was just weird to me. And 
I don't know. I just feel like I would have wanted to see more from that. Um, but again, overall, the way things ended there, I was satisfied by. The same with Renata and Gordon. This is the one plot line this season that I do actually feel was quite underwritten. I, I would have wanted more, really. I would have wanted more here, because while I think the show did a good job at showing just how dastardly and just how toxic of a person Gordon really is and how this was affecting Renata... I don't feel like they did enough with it. They often played it off for humor, and I think they could have striked the balance a little bit better. Laura Dern is such a fantastic actress, and they did a good job, I think, with her as an actress. They utilized her very well this season, but I would have wanted a little bit more with that storyline. I feel like we just we needed more room to play with, and that's why I feel like this season in general... Seven episodes for me just wasn't enough. I feel like we needed either two more or three more, and then these two storylines could have been satisfying. The other storylines are great, as they are, definitely. But these two stories, I just felt, were a little bit underwritten, and we could have done a little bit more there for sure. Um, so definitely that was a little bit weird. And also, um, I don't really understand why Abby and Ziggy were main characters this season. They didn't have nearly as much going on in season one. Abby had this storyline with college, but then they didn't really go anywhere with that. They kind of just dropped it off. And I didn't really complain because I liked what they were doing with Madeline. I think the Ed and Madeline stuff was great. But I definitely noticed that, yeah, they just kind of forgot about that storyline completely. Like the first two episodes, it was a thing. And then they just never went back to it and that was very odd to me um for sure and i thought for sure abby was gonna have more to do when it came to the stuff between you know how she knew what was going on with madeline we never really saw that much of her and Catherine newton is such a great actress i do feel the show kind of underutilized her this season and then ziggy he had stuff going on but i don't think there was enough i would have liked to see a little bit more of him and max and josh and them trying to be brothers and things like that and then really my only other flaw of the season is really just kind of a nitpick. There was some very strange editing this year, uh, especially in the beginning of each episode, how we would zone in on like one of the characters when Perry died and how they reacted. We didn't really get anything new at all. It was the same thing each time, and I don't really know why they decided to do that. It just felt a little little superfluous it's really the only thing this season that did because yeah there was a lot of flashbacks but a lot of that felt purposeful this just felt superfluous i don't really know why it was here it felt very unnecessary in that way and it's it was just a little strange it doesn't undermine like the season or anything but it was something that every time it happened it just took me off guard i never really understood i kept thinking that they were gonna do like a whole episode where like we see the aftermath of that or something like a whole flashback episode but they never did and instead we just got this and it was just, it was just very strange overall but again, as it stands, I think this was a very good season. Is it necessary? Yes, I, I do think that it is overall a necessary season. Now, would I have been fine if they ended after season one? Sure, but I feel like the season did enough to show this is why we needed more. This is more of what we need to dive into. Show the after effects of trauma. Show what that can do to you. They did such an excellent job with that with Celeste. Bonnie, and especially with Jane. I think Jane and, you know, Celeste, they did some excellent stuff with too, but the stuff with Jane, especially her trying to get close to Corey, and just constantly not being able to because of Perry, and her feeling closed off because of that, and her not being as open, I think that was very realistic, and I think despite the fact of how you feel about the Andrea Arnold thing, which again, it's, it's terrible for sure, I don't think you can deny this is probably one of the best shows to ever portray um, abuse, and the long-term effect that it has on an individual. This show has done some excellent work with that, and they continue to do that this season, and I think it was definitely one of the best parts of it for sure, and yeah, it was much more character-driven. It definitely did not have that hook that season one did, but... I felt like because that, we were able to dive a lot more into the characters, dive a lot more into who the Monterey Five are and things like that, and I think they did a good job with that overall. Um, and I don't think we needed to get any more with the lie than we did. I think we definitely got enough going on there. So overall, I really did love this season. I think there's definitely, you know, some stuff they could have done a little bit better. Like I said, those two stories could have gotten a little bit more room to grow, but the way they ended off... I was satisfied by. I like the way things did wrap up there. I don't have a problem with um, 
the way they ended it all. I just feel they need a little bit more to do there. But for the most part, I think this was still an excellent season. It definitely had a reason to come back. It did a great job showcasing the ensemble. It gave a lot more for characters like Bonnie and, um, you know, Bonnie and I would say uh, Renata especially had a lot more to do this season. Uh, Ed as well had a lot more to do. They really dived headfirst into the conflict between him and Madeline quite well. It showed, like I said, the effects of trauma. All of those things really do make this a very good season of television, one that I am definitely very happy that I reviewed every single episode of for you guys for sure. So now I'm going to grade both the season finale and the season as a whole. So for the season finale to episode 7, I want to, I'm going to give that episode in A, and the season as a whole, I'm actually going to give it the same grade I gave the, uh, you know, previous season, which is in A minus. Again, I don't want to have to keep reiterating, but I know there was a lot of production and stuff like that going on, but I'm not going to let that encroach upon my thoughts on the season, because as a season of television, it was really great. I was very satisfied, and if they want to end here, I am perfectly fine with that. Obviously, these actresses are in high demand. You cannot get them constantly, but the fact that Reese Witherspoon and Nicole Kidman came back, um, I think was definitely warranted for sure, and I'm very excited to see, um, you know, them possibly do other projects here, because I think they definitely did some great work here for sure, but either way, guys, that's it. Big Little Lies is now seemingly over. I keep saying seemingly because we don't actually know if this is the end. We just kind of are assuming it is, uh, but let me know what you guys saw this finale overall. Left your thoughts on it. What do you think of this season? Did you like it? Did you not like it? All that kind of stuff. We'll see you guys. Uh, thank you guys, of course, for watching my reviews the entire season as well. Um, even though I don't think the season was nearly as popular and had much of a claim as season one, at least not as consistently, um, I still feel like I did a good, I did a good thing in reviewing this for you guys every single week. It definitely, um, made me appreciate the show even more than I did, um, if I were to watch it as a season, and I think that's something that I really do love doing about these individual episode reviews, but that's it for this video. Hope you guys enjoy it. We'll see you guys in my next video, and we'll see you guys for that. Okay, bye.